Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing five of my tips, if you will, that I implement in order to achieve effortless summer style, especially for really, really hot weather. So we're talking heat wave weather. Now I've also had the pleasure of teaming up with Farfetch for some bits within this video. So those little segments will be clearly displayed on screen. Now let's get started with tip number one. Right, so tip number one is to keep it simple. Now one piece of guidance, and I don't exactly remember where I read this or who told me or where it originally came from, but one piece of guidance that I find really useful all year round, but especially in summer, is the rule of three. Now, for those of you who are regulars, you will very much be familiar with the amount of time that I spend talking about the three color rule. And I'm gonna sort of touch on that a little bit later in this video, but the rule of three can also apply to pieces of clothing. So in this instance, three pieces of clothing per outfit maximum that does exclude accessories, so it's just clothing. And despite what you might think, this isn't to encourage you to wear as few clothes as possible and to be as scantily clad as possible. It's actually the opposite. It's, I feel like this tip is supposed to make you think and be a bit clever with the items of clothing that you're actually wearing in order to protect yourself from the sun and the heat. So naturally, summer dresses are a really good option for hot weather. They're also really useful when it comes to that rule of three because it's just one garment. So that frees up two extra garments that you can use for added protection against sun and heat. Now I very much have a go-to style of summer dress that I tend to gravitate towards. It's usually long, so either sort of quite long midi to maxi length. That's what I sort of prefer in terms of length. And then I like something that has ventilation and it's perhaps maybe if it's fitted on the top kind of like this one that I'm wearing from Dish and then a little bit more voluminous on the bottom so that there's plenty of air circulation available there and it doesn't necessarily have to be sleeved because as I just mentioned you've got those two extra garments which you can use so for example I could now use a nice linen shirt as a cover-up over the top. Right, so I've got one dress here which pretty much summarizes my ideal summer dress. Summarizes, pardon the pun. So this is by the Australian brand Mateau and I bought this via Farfetch. And this is actually one of the things that I really like and really appreciate about Farfetch because it makes shopping really, really easy. And that's that they stock all of these, let's say slightly more underrated or under the radar brands like Matto. We all know, and I think a wider audience know, of all the super, super premium it brands, but then it's brands like this, which amongst us minimal dressers are, let's say, more of a cult brand. And I just like the fact that I can go to Farfetch, I've got all of my personal favorite brands all under one virtual roof. It's just having that variation and such a vast choice of brands and products from all kinds of independent boutiques all around the world. And for anyone who's interested, I do have a 10% off discount code, which will appear on screen now. If you miss it, don't worry, we will repeat it through the video and it will also be down below in the description box along with all the terms and conditions that you need as well. So as I mentioned earlier, I do prefer a longer dress. This one is literally a shave off being a maxi dress on me. It sort of just hovers above my ankle, which is ideal. The top half is very much like a basic sort of vest. Um, it's fitted, a little bit more elasticated, and then the bottom half is more voluminous, and that is made from 100% cotton, and there's definitely more breathability and ventilation down in that area. And not only that, the bonus feature, which all of us women love, is that it's got pockets. This is not at all relevant to a heat wave. I just love any dress that has pockets. 
And then as I mentioned earlier, because it is more of a strappy dress on the top half, I can layer over a shirt using a slightly different alternative technique to tying it at the waist in order to cinch it in so that you don't lose the shape of that dress and lose the volume of the skirt, which bows out at the bottom. Now, another option that I favor for the rule of three and for keeping it simple in general is a loose fitting linen. I know I sound like a broken record because I talk about linen constantly anytime we head into the summer season, but it is just my go-to. And it could be another dress, like the one that I've got on, or it could be, and I've been wearing this quite a lot recently, it could be a shirt, maybe a vest top underneath, loose layers, and trousers, linen combo. Loose fitting, elasticated waist trousers, oversized linen shirt, or I could go for shorts. Yes, so to summarize, this first tip is about keeping outfits simple. Stick to that rule of three and be clever and really think about each garment that you're wearing and how it can protect you against both the heat and the sun. Moving on to tip number two, which granted isn't outfit related, but it does fall within the realm of appearance. And that is little to no makeup whatsoever. Now, before I get stuck into this one, I know there are many people out there who adore makeup. It's like an art form. I get that and I agree. Some people out there can absolutely nail makeup in a way that I could never. And I know it's very important to people both for confidence reasons and perhaps it's just part of your identity, in which case you go for it. You put as much on your face as humanly possible. I am here for that. However, personally, I've never really been a big sort of makeup person. Um, I've never sort of found that I needed makeup to sort of cover up things. I'm very, very fortunate with my skin, good genetics. Thanks, mum. And I don't know why I looked up there, like as if she's dead. She's not dead. Mum's very much alive, so fret not. Um, but yeah, so I've never been a big sort of makeup wearer. So for me, what I like to do on sort of a daily basis is either go for something like a tinted moisturizer or a lightweight gel, sort of bronzing gel, or I'll often make my own. I'll use a moisturizer and add some sort of like luminizer drops or add a bit of bronzer to that as well. And then mix it up to achieve more of like a subtle, dewy summer glow. Now, in case you didn't already know, Farfetch do beauty now, and they have one of my favorite cruelty-free skincare brands. It is Dr. Barbara Sturm. Now, I first discovered this brand three years ago-ish, and I started trying or using the Glow Drops. It has been a repeat purchase of mine. It's one of my most frequently recommended cruelty-free beauty products, and actually a recommended beauty product for anyone that doesn't wear a lot of makeup and they love just a glow, like a dewy, fresh glow. I always recommend that product. So I have decided to try the Sun Drops, which is an SPF of 50. They're really nice and lightweight, and I actually really like the packaging. I'm just gonna whip it out and show you because it comes in the same packaging as the glow drops. And you can literally just drop them out, which I suppose is why they're called drops. And it looks like not a great deal that you get in there. There's 30 mils, but I've been using this for the last week and it goes such a long way. And I never ever scrimp on my SPF on my face. Sometimes I go a little bit overload. I never scrimp on SPF and this is going a long way. So although this is at quite a premium price point, it's definitely, definitely worth the money. And it's nice and lightweight. It's not leaving my skin oily or shiny and it sits really nicely under anything else that I then choose to put on top of my skin. Which, for example, would be this. This is my current go-to sort of I don't wanna call it a base, but it's the product that I'm using to give myself a little bit of a glow and a little bit of bronze because my face doesn't really tan or I, I avoid getting my face in direct sunlight throughout summer just because 
I haven't been very good with sun protection on my face in my younger years, so I'm trying to, I can't reverse any of the damage, but I'm trying to limit any further damage. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Healthy Glow, and it is essentially a tinted moisturizer. It's quite clever. It comes out completely white, but it's got these little microbeads of pigment in which activate when you rub your fingers together or activates as you start to apply it to your skin. And that's when you start to see that really subtle little hint of summer color come through on your face. It's not over the top, nice and subtle, and it gives a really, really beautiful glow. And then the only other product that I'll apply to my face is a brow gel, just to give them a little bit of a fluff up because I am still trying to sort of grow my brows a bit, trying to encourage them to grow. So I've got another Charlotte Tilbury product here, which is called Legendary Brows. That's the current brow gel that I'm using, which again is fire far fetch beauty. So yes, just a nice clean and fresh, but protected face. A nice glowy complexion is the look that I go for. And in my personal opinion, it is a must for effortless summer style. Right, tip number three, is a neutral color palette. Now, those of you who are regulars here to my channel will know of my love of neutrals. It's just my thing. Now, I haven't always been this way. I have worn color previously. And in all fairness, my wardrobe isn't completely devoid of color, but the neutrals really are the most valuable pieces. And in general, it's just the vibe that I find very aesthetically pleasing. So having a range of neutrals makes everything really easy to mix and match. And especially in summer, I personally think that it's a really effortless color palette to wear. And it's something that I feel, I don't know, very sort of relaxed in. So my wardrobe mainly consists of neutrals of all the varying tones and colors from the plethora of beiges to sort of earthy tones like browns, khaki greens, and even some mustard yellows, rusty reds in there. And to sit alongside those, I've got the core sort of colors and tones like black, white, and navy. Now I do have a fair bit of blue in varying shades in my wardrobe, and that's definitely expanded this season. So I'll mix in those pieces where possible. And what I don't own are neon colors, bright and what some people might sort of deem as typical summer colors like bright pink, bright yellow, orange, red, purple, and all those kind of colors. And I don't invest much in the way of prints unless it's that rare sort of piece of occasion wear. Stripes are about the only pattern that I will entertain. But I do like textures, so I love a crinkled fabric. So now is the time I'm gonna return to that rule of three and quickly address the three color rule. Whoop! Does exactly what it says on the tin. Three colors per outfit. However, this time it does include accessories. So it's literally whatever you have in your outfit, there must only be three colors. I mean, I say there must only, it's not set in stone, pardon the neutral pun. <laughs> but it's just a guidance, a little tip to kind of make, and I, speaking from experience, find that it makes putting an outfit together really, really easy. And little fun fact, it's not really a fun fact, but a fact, is that actually some of my favorite outfits have come from the experimentation or rather the rejigging of an outfit which didn't fit into the three color rule. I've kind of had to play around with it to get down to those three colors. And some of those outfits have been my most favorite outfits. Just give it a try. Honestly, it will be life-changing. Now, the reason that I stick to three colors, not all the time, but most of the time, is just that I think it looks really clean. It's sort of fuss free, it's very minimal, which of course is a huge element of my style. And it does just make putting outfits together super, super easy. Right, moving on. I'm sorry, I'm very warm. I'm very warm, I need to waft a little bit. <laughs> moving on to tip number four, and that is limit your accessories. Now, what I mean by this is just not going overboard with jewelry, hats, 
bags, belts, like all the accessories, scarves, just for the sake of styling. So starting off with jewellery, most jewellery is made from metal. So naturally it attracts the heat. And the last thing I want is to be wearing layers and layers of necklaces or giant hoop earrings that are going to burn my flesh every time I move my head. So I keep my jewellery really, really simple and very, very minimal, which is not really anything new for me, but it definitely does make a difference when there's heat involved. Another thing to bear in mind is that obviously during hot weather, we get a little bit sweatier. So if you've got any jewelry that's made or rather that's plated or it's got gold for May on there, this can actually be, or these coatings can be eroded by the moisture on your skin, by chemicals in SPF and other lotions. So it's a good idea in order to prolong the life of those jewelry pieces to actually avoid wearing them in super, super hot weather when you are a little bit moist. Belts, they're just a big no-no for me during a heat wave. The last thing I want is something that brings fabric or a garment closer to my skin and locks it in place on my skin. I want flexibility, I want a little bit of elastic in there. It's also one less thing to have to undo in a hurry due to the volume of water that I've been drinking when I need to go to the toilet a million times a day. Hats. Now I'm not saying don't wear a hat, but invest in a good sun hat or a few, if like me, you like to have options. <laughs> Collect them, if you will, over the years, but investing in something that is practical and functional rather than just style orientated is the way to go. Right. Bags, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to check if I've got hat hair. I probably have, but I'm so small on that screen, I can't tell. Just ignore it if I've got a bit of hat hair. Bags, now, think about the practicality and even the comfort of your bags if you're gonna be carrying one around during a heat wave. Is it lightweight? Is it comfortable? Like, is it gonna dig into your shoulder? Are the straps comfortable? Is it the sort of fabric that's gonna stick to your like sticky skin, oh, I hate that feeling. Is it something that's going to scratch or rub or irritate your skin? So many different factors to think about. One of my go-to bag brands for summer, as you guys know, because I've spoken about this previously, is Dragon Diffusion. I have this little one, which I got from Farfetch recently. This is a new addition to my bag collection, if you want to call it that. Now, I find these bags super, super comfortable for wearing in hot weather. The straps... Well, they're very lightweight for a start, so there's no, even if you sort of add quite a few bits in there, they're very, very flexible. The leather, because it's woven, if it was sort of one flat sort of non-woven piece of leather, I find that it would sort of maybe stick to your underarms, but because it's woven, it's got that texture to it, so there's not enough surface area for your skin to stick, which I like. The straps are not too skinny, but also not too wide. And again, because they've got that textured woven sort of fab or leather through them, I don't find that they stick to my shoulder either if I was gonna be wearing something like this, which has no protection on the top. And then at the same time, because it is leather, I get no sort of scratching like I would do from, let's say perhaps a straw or a wicker bag. On to my fifth and final tip, which, is a little bit of a cheat because this is actually something which I've already touched on throughout the four previous tips. But it's something that I often find I need to reiterate to myself, whether I'm buying something new for my summer wardrobe or whether I'm just up in my wardrobe and I am putting together an outfit for a heat wave day. I need to remind myself, comfort. Comfort comes first. This is the most important tip 
of all, which is why I'm stressing it so much. Now, one of the most important things to get right in terms of comfort is footwear. Now, I know I am not alone in the Birkenstock fan club. There are many of us in this fan club. And actually, in all honesty, I haven't always been big on Birkenstocks, but it's been the last maybe three years where I've really, really got into a Birk. And this would be my go-to style. And I've spoken about these before. It is the Arizona. The Arizona is the two strap slide. So there's nothing on the back. It's literally slide your foot in. And there's two straps here. And very specifically, it's the suede versions. Now, if any of you have seen any of my wardrobe changeover videos and you've seen kind of my plethora of summer sandals, you'll have seen that I have two other pairs of these in suede. I have a tan and I have the infamous faded khaki, which you all absolutely love. And then I had a black oiled leather. Admittedly, the oiled leather ones, I personally think for my feet, not as comfortable as the suede. Obviously, they're a lot harder, a lot more structured, and I found that they needed a lot of breaking in. Even once they were broken in, they were still quite stiff, and I didn't find that they were as comfortable as the suede version. So I decided to sell those and replace them with another black version, but in the black suede which I got from Farfetch. They had so many different colors and things on there, various different buckle options. And I decided to just go for the full black. So these have got the full black sole. They've got the black buckle as well. So it's literally just the two colors on there, the natural color for the soft footbed and then the black for all of the other parts of the shoe. Now, when I'm talking about comfort, this of course is gonna vary from person to person. So what I find comfortable, you might not find comfortable and vice versa. It's about trial and error and really testing out items to see what you can bear to wear in an all day heat wave circumstance. Right, there we go. That's it from me today. Now next week, I am spoiling you guys with the summer tips because I do have some more summer products to show you guys. So tune in for that one. And just a little reminder again, for anyone who is interested, there is that Farfetch 10% discount code, which is down below in the description box, along with all the terms and conditions. But for now, thank you very much as always for watching and I will see you next time.